What I thought might be fun this time is to go through a teaching pros bag. People will often see me come out with this big, big, heavy Wilson bag and wonder what on earth is in there. So let's reveal. So starting off with the obvious, rackets, duh. Um, I always go out with two rackets uh, for the obvious reason that if one breaks, I have another one as a backup. But also, if my student's racket breaks, um, then uh, I can lend them one immediately. And usually, uh, I'll have two rackets with two different string tensions. One a little bit looser, so that if I'm playing with a more intermediate player, I don't have to work quite as hard. The racket gives me a lot of rebound, a lot of power without me having to swing too hard at it. And then the other racket will be a little bit tighter strung. And that's usually for more advanced players where I might need to swing a little bit faster. I need something with a little bit more control. The, uh, the middle section is usually all kinds of targets. So you have obviously the cones, which you use for targets for serves or somewhere where your student needs to hit their forehands or their backhands to. I've got the, the spot targets. That's usually for uh, the student to know where to stand. They can stand on these quite safely. They're done from on court, off court. They're really, really good quality and you can place them on, on the tennis court. You don't slip on them. Uh, Use for, for reminding somebody where they need to stand at the net. Then uh, we have the lines, uh, which I'll use with juniors if I need to make the court a little bit smaller, or with adults if I need to delimit the court space in any way whatsoever. Um, so then we have... All right, let's start off with this one. This is one of the most useful gimmicks that I use. Uh, it was invented by Peter Burwash, and um, it's to uh, help people visualize the correct contact on their ground strokes. So what most, most of our students are visual learners, and this will help them to imagine the importance of hitting through the ball. What often happens is people are either swinging too fast to the side, hacking down too fast, and are therefore either mishitting the ball or not getting enough depth on them. And by telling them to imagine that instead of one ball coming toward them, that there's actually four balls and that they've got to hit through the length of those four balls, that helps them. Usually I'll use it in conjunction with a racket with no strings and I'll have them experiment for themselves swinging through those four balls and then take their normal rackets with them and try it uh, try it by themselves. This is also a good one to use for people who swing too fast and are therefore miss hitting balls. Have uh, Throw them a few balls and see if they can actually hit the ball without it touching the frame. Um, going on from that one, this is a fun one that I did a few years ago. It's got six strings on the mains and six strings on the crosses. Um, again, for those who tend to swing too fast, they're obviously going to have to slow down if they're going to have any chance of meeting the sweet, uh, the sweet spot right here. And I like to also use this one as a challenge to myself. Uh, very often I'll play a game in the warm-up with my students, um, first to seven or ten points, and I'll use this racket and they'll use a normal racket, and it's challenging for me to actually make contact there and keep the ball in play. Um, then, uh, this is another great one. Uh, this is the PBI catching racket. Um, we tend to use this to teach people how to volley correctly. Uh, and especially for those who take too much of a swing, who punch at the ball, and who don't understand that the volley is actually a catching motion. Something where you actually have the racket face open and you wait for the ball to come towards you rather than hit down on it. And so this is a great one because they obviously realize very, very quickly that all they need to do is hold the racket and let the, ra and let the ball go into the racket. Um, going on from that, this is another one similar to the catching racket. Uh, it's one of these, well, I don't know what they're called, but uh, the idea being catch rather than swing. 
And then what else do we have? Ah, yes, we have the Frisbee. Great one to teach the one-handed backhand. People understand from throwing the Frisbee that you go from a bent motion to an extended motion. And again, when you throw a Frisbee, you don't go over with your shoulders. You let the arm do the work primarily. So, what else do we have? Uh, yep. All right, we've got uh, in this one, grips, grips, grips. Grips for me, grips for my student. Uh, thermometer, very, very hot day. See if we're breaking any records or very cold days for that matter. Business cards, um, sun cream, sweeties. Uh, sweeties if my students or myself need an energy boost. What do we have in this? Oh, this one's a good section. All right, plastic bag with one or several balls. This one is a great one for people who don't have a feeling for how to do the serve. They got to try and swing it in such a way that the racket never touches that back. Or oh, well, there you go. I didn't do it correctly. But again, teaches them how to swing correctly at the serve. We've got this, I got this many, many years ago in Japan when I was living there. This one is a great one. So it's, it's a actually fairly heavy little weight that you slide over the grip and onto the throat of the racket. And this one is great for making your racket much, much heavier. All of a sudden it becomes super, super heavy. And now you're having to let the weight of your racket do the work. If you've got students who are just way too whippy and just can't control the racket head or whatever, this is a great way for them to start feeling letting the racket do the work for them. Also, it's a good one for warming up the serve, makes your racket super, super heavy. And then when you suddenly take this thing off, your racket becomes super light and you're able to whip that racket and get just astonishing power thereafter. Um, what else do we have in there? Oh yes, this is an important one. This is a Velcro, I don't know how you would call that, but basically it's for those who chronically change their grips on the volley. There is one grip and only one grip on the volley and it's a continental grip. But that's tough for many people who've never gotten the experience of doing it correctly. And they will tend to slide off to their more known but less correct grip very, very quickly. So this, I'll tie this round their hand and it traps them and they thereafter have to hit the volley with that position and they find it much more difficult to change a grip or at least it raises their awareness of the fact that that grip has to stay in one position. Um, what else do we have? Ah, uh, yep, we've got this thing. This is, um, this came off a, um, one of these ball tubes. It's the strap that they usually, uh, you, uh, that they have on ball tubes. I'll use this instead and put it round the shoulders of my student tie it around here and use it as a way to teach my student how to do the forehand volley. It teaches them several things or it forces them to do several things. First of all, it forces them to keep the arm bent rather than extended. A good forehand volley has an arm bent to an arm bent motion. Secondly, it prevents them from swinging wildly or taking the racket back uh, too wildly. And thirdly, it teaches them the idea of catch rather than swing because if they do too <coughs> they get strangled over here nothing like a bit of torture sometimes to teach the good things and then what do we have ah yeah this front pocket uh lots and lots of um uh dampeners uh, one of the things that people lose very, very quickly and something that's very important to many people. Also a nice little prize to give out to kids when they do something well. They can pick from all kinds of different ones that I have in here. And then the final section, the goodie section, the one that their kids all know when I grab into that, it's good news for them because there's all kinds of gifts grips and bands and gummy bears and 
whatever else in there. Anything that'll bring a smile to those faces. So there you have it. That's the content of my bag. Now you know why it's so heavy. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of pros with different things uh, in their own bags, but this is uh, my toolkit. This is what will, uh, these are the kinds of things, the kind of themes that I deal with 90% of the time and therefore these are the things that I use most frequently. I have other little tools and gimmicks that I'll keep in the pro shop that I'll run over in case I need them, but this is usually what gets me through most lessons. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you know now what's in there and why it's so heavy. So for those of you who hung around to watch all the way to the end, here's the bonus one. A spider, a plastic one, don't worry, a rubber one. It's what I call my highly poisonous Mauritian spider. Now, what do I use this for? Um, I use this one primarily for positioning at the net. Uh, what will happen is a lot of people will either stand too close to the net or too far back from the net. Either one is not ideal for the obvious reasons and this is to scare them into standing at the right place. So what I always tell them, you stand in the wrong place, this thing is gonna come and bite you up the butt.